Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil. So let's take a look today uh, on the possibility that we are now in a short season where Satan is loosed or even possibly already in the day of judgment because a day does not always literally mean one literal day right it can be a time of judgment as well and even potentially it is possible that we are already in the lake of fire so the church started to call the grave or the valley of Hinnom they started to translate it as hell hell was the goddess of the underworld world but uh, this idea arose that um, in the future there's going to be a judgment day billions of people will stand there and he will be judged right and some will fly off to heaven and others will go to hell and be tortured for all eternity day and night torture 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 without end right which is strange because death and hell will even be thrown in the lake of fire but i don't want to talk about the afterlife what exactly happens when we die I want to talk about the right here right now what is going on in our world so most Christians have been taught that while being here it doesn't really matter you just try to be a good person right one day that big judgment will come and then you will receive afterlife or receive eternal hell but when you really read the Bible it, uh, <laughs> there is already fire already mentioned all through the bible and what it means right what does it mean the lake of fire what is the true translation what does this torment actually mean and all these things apply to us right here and right now someone said chris you said globe don't you know that we're not living on a ball but on a flat earth first of all this is not a flat earth channel and secondly i never suggest that we're living on a ball Right? I just like to use certain words to make a distinction of what we view as the world today and what the Bible actually means when it's talking about the earth or the world. No, it's, I'm not talking about round or flat. I'm talking about the place we live as a white Christian people. Someone said, Chris, you are so hateful, but my channel is about European history. I didn't even speak hateful to it other people's. Right? But somehow today, speaking about your own European history is considered hateful. And then people say, forget about your history, forget about the Bible, forget about everything, because Jesus died for the sins of the whole world. But I'm just teaching biblically what the Bible means when it's talking about the whole earth and the whole world. So let me give you a few examples of what I mean. In Daniel we read that Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon unto all people, all nations and all languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. So the Babylonian empire stretched all the way to the Middle East, into Egypt, Northern Arabia, all the, this whole area was the Babylonian empire and they called it their world, their earth, their land. The Hebrew word does not mean globe or entire earth no it means that place where they ruled the same thing we see in luke 2 1 and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from caesar augustus that all the world should be taxed it was about the census he wanted people to register within the roman empire this whole roman empire was all the world so in my last video I talked about our history since the first century and this millennium reign and what happened and what not happened but there is so much to go through guys there is so much more to make it all work right um, at this point it's basically still a thesis right but there is too much evidence to ignore but if this millennium reign actually happened that mean that after the millennium reign Satan would be loosed from his prison so I want to identify today the symptoms and the consequences and what truly happened if Satan really was loosed. What would Satan do? First we have to see what Satan actually means because the church teaches you that Satan is a red being with horns and a pitchfork, right? 
and that is uh, basically is fighting God and God's people. But the meaning of Satan simply means adversary, go against. So let me give you examples, right? In Matthew we read, when Peter looked, took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But then he, Jesus, turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan, thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but of those that be of men. So Jesus was not telling his beloved apostle that he's actually a red being with a pitchfork. No, uh, Peter went against the will of God. What was the will of God? That Jesus would be crucified. Right? Peter was telling him, I have to go there, I'm going to be punished, right? I have to suffer many things, right? I'm going to be killed. Peter said, no, 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 let's go away. Get behind me, adversary. You go against the will of God. So in that sense, Peter was Satan against the will of God. It's nothing to do with a red being with a pit for guys. So if we would have stick to the truth, right? If we would have had a love for the truth, then all these things would have never happened. But we are beguiled. We started to accept new Marxist teachings in the church. We ourselves became adversary towards God. And there are consequences if you do that. In my other video I showed you a little clip of the speech of Dr. Martin Luther King. Where he says, I have a dream that I will be judged on the content of my character. And this is the root of that deception. I'm not talking about him as a man, but it's talking about that idea that has crept into the church that it is only about you. Right? Christianity has become me, myself, and I. Right? You hear people always say, Jesus is my Lord and Savior. Right? Jesus is my God. All these things. Right? But the Bible is constantly speaking not just about your relationship with God, which is important, but also as us as a people. So when I speak about our people, our European history, and how we are reconciled, right? We were once lost but found, reconciled. People comment that it's hateful, how dare you say that? In other words, we as European people are no longer allowed to view ourselves as a people with a home. But what has our God have to say about this? Deuteronomy 7, 6 For thou art a holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God had chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Now was God speaking to all different peoples, right? And, his, and, and did he say, if you believe in me, now you are my special people. No, God was speaking to the children of Israel, the true Israel. How about when God said this to the children of Israel? You only have I known of all the families of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for all your iniquities. So only his children of Israel he has known. But he chastens those he loves. And when they become disobedient, he will punish them for their iniquities. Guys, if you look at the state of Europe and America at the moment, can you say that we are blessed or that we are being punished for something we did? Well, yes, we are under judgment, right? That's why it's important to understand these things. But some may say, well, Chris, this was all Old Testament. Jesus did away with that whole thing. Oh, really? Let's look at the New Testament then in Colossians. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. So, you see, we have to be humble and kind to all other gods and all other peoples. Notice that Paul is saying, he's saying, us as a people, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do Ye, it's an instruction how we as the elect should 
treat each other, right? Same thing with Jesus when he says you have to love your enemies. It has nothing to do with bringing people in who hate you, right? Bringing in Islam, uh, building mosques all over the place. That's not what Jesus was saying. He was talking to the children of Israel of how they should treat one another, right? And even brothers among each other can become each other's enemy. So God said, I will send them a spirit of delusion because they do not have a love for the truth. So what would you do to destroy God's kingdom on earth if you were Satan, if you were loose from your prison? What would you do? Well, you would take down the children of God. This is exactly what happened in the Garden of Eden. I have to make a whole video explaining the garden, what there happened. But this thing is a theme that goes all through the Bible. Guys, there is nothing new under the sun. This theme keeps repeating itself. And I'm going to make another video to show you how all the empires fell. And it was always since the Garden, uh, Noah, uh, the Babylonian Empire, the Greek Empire, the Roman Empire, why it always fell. Well, in Ecclesiastics we read, the thing that had been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. There is no new thing under the sun. So when Satan was loosed, one of his schemes was to make you feel helpless, that there is no millennium reign of Christ, right? Suddenly we had to start all over from scratch in the 1800s while we had all these buildings. But besides that, also they will convince you that you are not a people. So before Satan was loosed, we were a people for thousands of years, right? And during this millennium reign, we became one in Christ. Yes, there were adversaries there, but the main goal was Christianity. That was the faith on which all things were made. Now we see that in Europe and America statutes of white European leaders and stuff are being removed. Whether they were good or bad, it is still part of our history. Everything is being removed and replaced with other statutes. Now we see in Rotterdam in the Netherlands this statue has been placed. Right? Also uh, this statue of the, this gentleman in America is now being put up all over the place. But I don't understand why so many Millennium Kingdom um, believers can't see it. But if this Millennium Kingdom was so wonderful, why don't we see other people, right? Of course, this was the European Millennium Reign. It was not multicultural back then. God said, I shall not have other gods before me. But Satan, in this short season, has convinced you, no, 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 guys, that's racist. Give up your inheritance, share your inheritance, and just don't even dare to talk about it. How dare you! So who convinced us to make nations with different gods, different religions, different peoples? Who was that? Was that God? Or was that Satan? I can't remember Jesus ever saying, now I want you to go out, start Christian nations, and bring in other gods and build strange temples and mosques all over the place. Now Jesus never told us this, guys. But I grew up in the 70s, 80s when this multiculturalism started to arise more and more. And we were very tolerant. We wanted to help everybody, right? And if you're from areas where there's war, we generally wanted to help people. And once they were here, we want them, wanted them to be equal. Uh, for the, we want, we truly, honestly, most European people wanted to be good to people. But it has come to the point that we start caring so much about other people's feelings that we turn a blind eye to what's happening to our nations. I was working in a company and um, one guy, a black guy, nice guy, we became work besties, right? Uh, he came out of jail, but in jail he said he converted to Christianity and he changed his life and he became a Christian. Well. I was, okay, fine, I have no problem with other people also want to believe in Christ. But then I asked him a question from, um, how do you feel about 
the white people being pushed out of their own cities, they're becoming a minority because it's inevitably going to happen, guys, that we will be a small minority in the future. And he said, well, I don't care. Who cares about that? Right? Civilizations come and go. Right? So that is that was his attitude. Right? So deep inside, he really doesn't care about us. But God is called the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And we are that Jacob. So how can you say that you love God but hate Jacob? How is that possible? It's not possible because they believe in a different Christ. They believe in an all-inclusive religion where they don't love you back. Europeans want to love and care and help others and they are allowed in the nations but it is inevitable that when these groups grow that they start to turn against you more and more and more. Also people will say no 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 the people uh, the Islamic people the, it's just the extremists. Most Muslims uh, they just want to do their thing and they, you know they, they love England for example but it is only logic that the more Muslims you have that even the moderate ones would love it if England would become an Islamic state. I mean, why wouldn't they? They're Muslim. Why wouldn't they want everything to be Islamic? It's just logic, guys. John the Baptist preached, repent or perish. He was not talking to the individual. He was talking to the children of Israel. They would perish as a people if they did not repent. It's a new island. It is though, it is a new island. It's a new island of uh, new different diversities multicultural people, Filipinos, Spanish, Africans, mixed people. I met the girl the other day and I was like, where are you from? She goes, my man's from China, I'm a die, from Africa. I'm like, whoa, Ireland is unique now. We're, 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 we're mixed. There's going to be Barack Obama's walking around, Beyonce's and all, oh, different, different sorts. Mixture of people. So the whites are going extinct here now. So we are, we're taking over. <laughs> We are the melting pot of the world and that, that's what makes us strong is our diversity and we need to learn to harness that and appreciate it. You'll be excused to think that this is a church, but as is the case across the UK, we've took it over. It's now actually a mosque, a masjid. Christianity is depleting, atheism is unfulfilling, Islam is here and it's here to stay. The British people, they may not like it, but as is the case with many things, there may be something which you don't like, which is good for you. So carry on making those churches for us, keep them empty. We'll buy them in a few years time and we'll make them into a mosque. We are the melting pot of the world and that, that's what makes us strong is our diversity and we need to learn to harness that and appreciate it. The number of people displaced by war and conflict worldwide is the highest it's ever been. And of all the countries that accepted refugees, per capita, Sweden recently took in the most. This is not the same country as it was, was before. If you want a job in here, take off your hijab. But now, there are signs that this stronghold of tolerance and democracy is being swept up in the populist wave surging across the continent. We got immigrant problem in pretty much every city, even smaller cities. All cultures are not equal. Claim that the is stupid. Several blacks held up skewers of white children at an art festival in France. Mind you, this comes right after the anti-white riots in France, where non-whites are rioting through the streets, attacking white people, killing white people, and that went on for weeks. But don't worry, this is just art. This isn't them openly celebrating conquest against white people. No, no, no. Don't get any funny ideas. It's just art. Come on, guys. Just like the mural under the Eiffel Tower. I mean, let's take a look at more of his work. It's just art. Stop looking, guys. Don't, don't make this something it's not. 
There's no underlying message behind any of this art, okay guys? I am so sick of all the conspiracy theorists out there. Guys, give it a rest. Violating Minnesota State Statute 609.50. Nation is men leading by example. We are the melting pot of the world and that, that's what makes us strong is our diversity and we need to learn to harness that and appreciate it. understand that our strength is in our... Protect the dreamers, these young people who came to this country as children and the respect we should show for the diversity of our country which I think is one of our great strengths.